Hi everybody and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the last video I posted and thank you for those who subscribed. For those who have, I will try to set a link down below or a link at the top to your channels. So once again, thank you very much for subscribing. Today I am looking at coupling. As I said in my previous video, I was having a rather large amount of derailments and that was just going around. Curves, now I have tried to make sure that the track that I've got down is at least a radius two uh, with radius three. The layout will have radius two and radius threes around it once it's actually in place, but that's the plan. So what problems was I having? Well, the KDs. This is a set of KDs on some cargo for vehicles and uh, they work really well. Um, the only disadvantage I did have was where the little kind of metal brackets, uh, little metal pipes that go down the bottom are for the magnet decouplers. I was having a little bit of an issue with those catching on track, but that's pretty straightforward. You just literally go off and bend those up using this special KD tool. I was also testing this on coaches. As you know, I store a lot of my stuff in drawers overnight, uh, lockable drawers. So I wanted to be able to do something which is quite easy. So these can be really straightforward. You just lift them up and they detach. There's no weird twisting around like you do with tension couplers, but and really straightforward. And it's as simple as that to rejoin them. The issue that I was having that with some of the carriages and also some of the freight and just general wagons is that the actual knuckles, if you want to call them that, are not completely level. And this was causing a problem, especially up a incline, they were effectively coming apart. And that I'm not 100% sure why, well I do actually, I think it's just they didn't have enough of a grip, they weren't fully engaged as in the, maybe the top. I don't know if you can see it, but let's imagine it was something along those lines. Uh, so it was making a connection, but under stress, it was uh, effectively getting disconnected. So that was that was the problem. And I said, what I really wanted to, be able to do was, I wanted to, be able to take my stock off the railway at night and put it away pretty straightforward without any hard work. So that was the plan. The other issue I had was with a couple of them, especially with the new HSTs, when I tried putting the KD on, the problems that I was getting was pretty straightforward. The heights were incorrect, and that is an issue. So for KDs, you have to use a tool. They've got one of these tools you can purchase, and it is a gauge. So it is designed to sit on your track so that you can gauge the height of your couplers. Now, as you might see, there is a little bit of a height difference there, but not significantly enough, but that's that's the idea behind them, and it tends to work really, really quite well. Now, with a lot of these wagons, like these vehicle movers, transporters, and the freight, the, um, the big cargo freight container wagons, is that they tend to be close coupled. So I did have a play. So I did put some of these really short KD couplers in, and I also tried the longer version as well, like those. The issue that I was having with these, it was still causing a lot of issues with the basically the, the wagons coming off. And it's like, this is just becoming really a nightmare. And I decided actually what I wanted to be able to do was when I go into a freight yard, I want to be able to sort of decouple these from the wagons. And to do that, you have um, several different options. So this is the most basic option that comes with the KD uh, couplers. It's their magnet, you can purchase it. And I bought one of these and you can basically put it in between the track and you do a bit of cutting, although this is not in place. You do do some cutting and you can lay it in there. And effectively what happens is the wagons go across that and you can decouple. So this is how they decouple. Effectively the train comes across and can stop. It shuffles back a little bit and away it goes. It's a really brilliant idea. You can just see that the little metal arm that goes down the bottom, you can just see it gets pulled to one side or the other and the benefit of this is obviously you can then push your stock away and then come back it is a really really neat solution and if you want to rejoin them you just have to push them across the magnets and they have now recoupled it's really clever and a simple solution on how it how it all works and that's what really intrigued me into the whole kd couplers 
So as I said before, what I actually really like about these KDs is they are functional. You can quite easily decouple a train and they look pretty good. But the problem I was having with these and the container freight units was when you get to the other end of these wagons, even with the KDs, and I tried various different lengths, so I tried the short, the medium, and the large, I could not get them to work reliably. Well, it, they would still derail around a lot of the curves on my layer, even though they are a radius too. Now, I can kind of understand why they put these in, these kind of straight through couplers that you can get with them. They're a bit of a pain. I'm not a massive fan because I have to take them apart every time and they are a little bit difficult to couple up. But having KDs at the end of two wagons actually worked. This actually resolved my problem, which I am really happy about. So that means that every pair of wagons, I can have a solid connection in the center and I have KDs at the other ends, which means that I can then use them to decouple and I can decouple in pairs effectively. It's not individuals, but it's pairs and that's, a, that's pretty much good enough for me. The KDs are gonna work really well for my rolling stock, for my wagons, because I want to use them in a freight yard and I want to disconnect them. As I said, I'm not a big fan of the tension hook couplers, which comes on a lot of the carriages that I have. And I want a method that I can quickly and easily disconnect a lot of the rolling stock that I have. And this is where I come to hunt coupling. I saw these, I think on, I think Dave, Clark Dave class 47 may have done something on these. And I saw them again in the latest edition of the Hornby magazine and I thought, I could have a look at these. So I've purchased uh, three of these. I've got the close coupling, the standard coupling, and the intermediate coupling pack. And I'm gonna try them on my HSTs and my coaches. Again, these are all magnetic, which will mean that I can quite easily, at the end of a running session, pull them apart and put them safely into my storage. So let's have a look at these and see how these operate on the carriages. So hopefully you can see there, that's how the new HSTs couple. And to decouple it is, oh, it's the right pain. You have to do all this twisty malarkey stuff and try to get them off. And it's just really annoying. So I'm kind of hoping that the Hunt couplings, although they have not got a bend in them, will allow it to work better. So I'm gonna give that a try and let's see how that plays out. So this is the hunt coupling, this is the intermediate that I've got on the back here, placed onto the HST power car, and now I want to see what happens when I try to attach the carriage. Well that didn't work and I've got no idea why I thought it would do. So there are two of the couplings, that is the intermediate at the bottom and the standard at the top and it is fractionally a larger but not a huge amount but sorry Chris I'm gonna hijack this a little bit what I wanted to say was I wonder if hunt couplings also do these where you can get them customized I want to be able to get a long one with an offset so that it um, has that kind of uh, Z shape to it. So it goes up and at an angle so that I can place that on the HST power car and it gets aligned nicely to those carriages. If if they can then that would be brilliant and I am going to send Hunt an email and ask if that's even a possibility. Back to you Chris. Now I've just realised that the actual carriages that come in the green GWR have these rather horrible methods of coupling. I'm Again, these are really fiddly to put together and a real pain. So I've literally just taken this one out of a box. I've never used it before. So I'm gonna replace, replace those with the hunt couplings and see if I can run this around quickly and see um, how it handles my slope and some of the bends I've got. So at the front here, we have got the HST dummy, which has got the tension hook couplings on there, followed by a carriage 
which has got one end has now got the connections for the hunt couplings and another set of hunt couplings and the final HST with the motor in and just standard tension couplings. The idea behind this is I get it go, go all the way around my loop and then I want to pull it back up and see how well the couplings manage. Now, typically I probably want to run, although it's not prototypical, a four or five carriage system. I have actually got eight of the green GWRs. I just don't have the length to run an eight car unit, which would be fantastic. Although I might give it a try when I've got my permanent slope in place. So let's see if this will work up and down the slope. So the overall conclusion for this, well, they certainly do seem to work. I mean, I've just pulled this up the slope, uh, the incline, and it has worked really well. I've done it at quite a bit of a pace. It's a speed step 70, so it's going up pretty well. It handled the F2 active braking. It's worked really well. I'm a bit disappointed that it doesn't work, and I may go and ask them, can they make some which have got a bit of a knuckle to them so that um, you can fit them to the HST? I think it'll be really handy for me. If not, maybe I'm gonna have to see if I can get something 3D printed. I hope to have a 3D printer at some point so I can do some of these kind of little jobs using um, CAD and all those other bits and pieces that you can use. But overall, I am quite impressed with these. I think they're about six pound 25 per set and you can obviously do four carriages. So they actually are pretty decent. Um, I'm quite pleased with them. Uh, the only thing I did realise is that uh, they are specific. You do have to have them in the right orientation. If you have them upside down, the actual magnets, and I should if I get a bit closer, if you have them upside down, the magnets do uh, do this. Um, but as long as you have them the right way around, they will automatically connect. But I had one upside down inside my NEM pocket, and it and it kind of did did that, which is. Um, which is not great, but that's, you know, you live and learn, as you say, but they work really well, seem to hold. They don't seem very strong, but they're obviously strong enough to do what I need them to do. So overall, very, very pleased. On that note, about couplings, the coupling conundrum, I think I'm gonna call the video, if I can get the word out. I think it's been uh, useful for me to have a play with this and have a look to see what was causing the derailments. As I said, I think uh, putting these in, putting these in now, I'm just gonna focus, focus. If we can put these on in between the, the STV uh, coaches, wagons, wagons that I've got, then I think it will work really well and I will have no issues with derailments in future. Although I've still got to lay the track, but that's the way, way things go. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, I'm gonna point in the right direction this time, then please hit the subscribe button, which is down here. And there'll probably be a subscribe banner somewhere around here. If you've liked the video, then please do hit the like button, that'd be excellent. And if you want to get an email every time I post a video, which of course you do, then don't forget to hit the notification bell. So I hope to see you again. I hope you do hit the subscribe button and I hope you've enjoyed the video on couplings. Uh, because there are an awful lot of them and lots and lots of different ways of coupling your wagons and locomotives together. So thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you again. And that's bye for me. Bye now.